Hello! I come to you with new technology. I have a webcam and a microphone. So hopefully I don't sound like absolute shit anymore, which is exciting because before it, it sounded like I was in a jet plane or yeah, something of a tumble dry or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a little play test of our game Conjoined. I'm quite excited because um, people have been doing a lot of really great work and um, I don't think I've even seen all of it yet so this is really exciting um, yeah so I'm going to use the power of technology to do one of these and then click clack on this little guy uh, and yeah already I can hear some awesome music which I haven't before which is cool just gonna drink it in a second I like what more can I say it's fucking ominous preparing you for the the grotesque creatures which are about to grace your unfortunate eyeballs I'm not even going to attempt to read that, it's going way too fast and I'm, a, I'm stupid, so if you have the ability to read that fast, good for you. I draw shit. I think the idea is that um, Eve's voice acting is going to supplement that. Uh, I suppose it hasn't been implemented yet. But either way, let's continue. Space. I tried to click it. That was dumb. Again, more more amazing sound design. You can hear the cicadas and the owl. I hope it's a conjoined owl, wherever it is. It's, it will have two heads, we can imagine. A dog. You got three different kinds of animals. Sweet. And also, another cool thing, the bean cans have lighting now, which is great, because they were quite, some of the feedback we received was that they were a bit hard to, to notice, easy to miss, so that's good. If you can notice on the top left as well, there's a counter, which is awesome. Keep track of the bean situation. Look at that little stamina bar. I think that's going to be more integral to the gameplay once the dash and spin attack are in because um, it's going to prevent you from abusing those mechanics. But even just for the running I think it's good because uh, it stops you from trying to run past everything even though the enemies are get getting a bit more difficult. <gasps> um, also the spawn the spawn system for the, for the, for the campfire has been implemented which is great um, I'm awaiting a little kind of tutorial on how to to set them up um, and it's it's gonna enable me to put them in in more places because right now um, it's probably a little bit too unforgiving with the respawn placement um, Ed our supervisor uh, yeah, that was some feedback we received from him, and I, I think it's good feedback. That's interesting. Definitely, definitely hurt that thing, but there we go. Yeah, I really like the ambient music. Oh. Damn it. Oh, I put this here just to test it. The Yeet Boy. Just to make him a bit smaller. Uh, yeah, I made him a bit smaller to try and fix the, the glitch where it chucks you into the... Into the sky.
And another thing I've recently changed is uh, being a bit more liberal with the bean bean situation. Um, I think it's an interesting concept to have every bean acquisition um, attached to a uh, platforming puzzle, but um, I was getting fairly narrow-minded in my perception of, of the platforming because when other people playtest them, it is harder and as makes so much, you know, it's obvious it's like, uh, because I'd made them and tested them a bunch, I got pretty decent at it. Um, but when, again, Ed was doing it, he, he got pretty frustrated and they're meant to be quite frustrating. Um, but it just, it was a bit harsh in terms of the bean, the bean distribution. So there's a couple just still messing about with it, but there's a, there's a couple more beans dotted around the level, which are easier to acquire. <laughs> I don't think I mentioned we only have like a week left to work on the game. Um, so yeah, I think where we're at, where we're we're at. Um, there's definitely a lot riding on this last week. Um, we still need the the key mechanic, um, and it's just kind of figuring out. I'm happy to do the models for that, but trying to make sure other people are able to model stuff if they like so you know um just focus on on oh that's another enemy the uh, suicide urchin <laughs> it would be great to have some kind of sound for that i think um the particle effect as well is is quite you know it's just we, we we've had talks of, of having kind of almost yeah, like a gore system for that. Um, I think as well, like that'd be cool. But as well, they could like just like explode more, like you know, an explosion effect that looks a bit more realistic and detailed. But like mechanically, it's it's really awesome, especially with the with the with the fact that you can um, you can stun them. I think the stun mechanic when the, the bleed is does less damage right now. Like if it doesn't cause bleed, like the scissors do less damage now. Without unless you cause bleed, which is an interesting change. Into a thousand death pits. I saw you ducking in some beans earlier. Oh yeah. So. Now when you fart, the um, the twins talk, which is cool, um, yeah, they, and they, they, the idea is that they blame each other for farting, but because they share a digestive system, they're both ready to blame, which is, yeah, um, but there's only two, so it's a little bit repetitive right now. And I recorded those voice lines before getting this boy, because um, I only arrived today, and there was a lot of complications. It was probably, yeah, it was about, it was meant to arrive like a week ago. But I suppose because um, more people were ordering stuff online or something, I don't know. Amazon's been a bit shite <gasps> with that. You reckon your putrid bowels, Connie? That was. Definitely you. So I'll probably redo a bunch of the voice lines with the twins. I think with Odious Keith, because the idea is that he is speaking through speakers anyway. We're gonna. What is up with the scissors? It just doesn't. If the, if it, if the scissors don't cause bleed, then it doesn't do any damage at all. Into a thousand cesspits. I saw you ducking into beans earlier. I don't know if that's a glitch or someone's like trying to change the design of combat. It's a little bit frustrating to me, but maybe it's because I'm used to for the used to the scissors always doing damage at, with the added bonus of of the bleed effect. 
Because if I, yeah, if I just only... Yeah, that feels a bit off to me. And the hitboxes seem to be reduced. Because if you imagine the way that the hitboxes actually work for the... You reckon your putrid barrels, golly, that was definitely you. Might have to turn it down a bit soon. Um, yeah, so the way that the hitboxes work for the wormoids is, if you imagine it, a cylinder which is kind of like three times the height of them, it, well that means is because they're so low, it's the only way you can really make it so you can, you can hit them consistently. But, something's wrong here, I think. Like, especially when I tried to hit with the bat, there's, there's no... I think we're just gonna have to leave him because, um, yeah, I can't kill him unless you cause bleed. So I thought it was a scissor issue. It's not. It's um, it's a hitbox issue, I think. Fine. I feel like they're pretty fun to fight right now. I wonder if it's just the standard one boy prefab that has this new issue, or if it's affected all of the variations. Because if the if the but I was able to kill them. I was able to kill the worm boys at the starting area. Fingers. Yeah, I don't know. That's it's hard, hard to know. Putrid bowels, are you ducking in this beans? Definitely you. Another thing I notice is if you um, if you double, double, double fart, then you get voice lines overlapping. Um, kind of weird. <laughs> I can't imagine it being too difficult to fix, but yeah, just uh. I think I noticed. So yeah, let's try these worm boys, see if we have the same problem. So the the green ones, the speed boys, because they're a different prefab, they haven't been affected by this issue, but this um standard worm boy seems to be so you can kill him if you cause bleed, which is, at least we have that. Yeah, here's one of the kind of area pieces, set pieces, you could say, which needs the finishing. Another thing is just waiting to to know who wants to do that. Um, the gate is nearly done. Speed boys. Oh, run out of stamina. Feel a bit oh, vulnerable. Little hidden stash. Oh, sprint too much, I think. So jump up here, just regain some stamina. Oh, the computer's making noises. <laughs> there is some just slightly hidden beans. I like how the, I just noticed the ambient, the ambient music changed, changed from. Wait, has it? Actually, I'm not sure. It feels like the ambient music has changed, or the ambient, not music, the ambient, just the ambience. I guess you'd call it. I don't really want to fight these dudes because um, I think I'll die. So. Okay, that failed. Getting probably get swarmed. 
I'm not regretting placing more beans down. Just gonna have to get a bleed on them. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not a hip, hitbox thing because you can still get him with bleed. I don't know. I know it's a glitch, but I do kind of like how they twitch when they die. Oh, another thing, um, if you saw on the top right, uh, and I think this might have been in response to our um, supervisor, Electra, playtesting the game. So when he was playing it a little while ago, he was taking bleed damage, but there was no uh, HUD element that was informing that that was the state he was in. Um, and one of our programmers, I feel like, took this information and implemented that status effect symbol which is great i think it would be cool to have some like in game kind of like if that makes sense like maybe like blood spurting from the twins similar to how when you attack the um the enemies with the scissors that they have a they have a particle effect that kind of comes out of them but that i mean that's that's like a you know what i mean like the hud the hud thing is like more than enough to at least make sure the player knows what's going on because I can imagine from a player perspective if they didn't know that they were receiving uh, bleed damage um, they'd be pretty pissed I'm thinking the recharge rate could be a bit faster for the stamina. I don't really know what. You don't want it to be so much that it just doesn't even feel like a penalty. We'll have to see, like, with the with the inclusion of the dash and and um. Or the no, I think the idea. Okay, yeah, so this is a glitch which really, really breaks the game. Um, I've, it happens to me quite a lot. Um, also, when I was recording gameplay for the trailer, um, which is a, yeah, uh, it happens, so that was frustrating too. I don't know why it happens. I've... I've let people know, so hopefully it's something that gets fixed because um, even though it doesn't happen like every single time, there's a chance chance that uh, it could happen during um, demo day where we submit the game to the lecturers and they play it. And they mark us on it. And if this happens during that time, I don't know. It would, it would probably mess up their playthrough quite a bit. So, and I don't think there's actually a way to to exit or to reload. You know, to the last bonfire or something like that. So. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to try, try again. I don't know why I try and click it. But in terms of yeah, in terms of glitches, I'd say that's the the worst one. I think the worm boys are probably 
solvable. Um, especially due to the fact that there's the um, I did not mean to leave this one boy in, by the way. Um, but the reason why the the one boy glitch is too bad um, is because the other prefabs don't have the same problem. So. They, are, they can act as like a control, like a, you can compare them and see what the differences are. Um, but if, worst case scenario, we can't find a fix, um, we could just take the prefab of either the speed boy or the, the yeet boy and make a copy of that and revert some of the um, values, scripts, whatever you want to call it. Um, to resemble the worm boy and change the texture maps back to the worm boy once. I'm curious how much damage the explosion actually does. I saw you talking into the beans earlier. It's interesting too, it seems like the, the scalpel was removed, which is really cool. I like that touch. The fact that I think, um, Definitely going to place a lot more of those uh, suicide urchins down. I think that would be really fun. Like, have an area which mostly consists of them as well. Like, yeah, that was, just seems really fun to me. Oh, did I miss those beans the first time? I'm gonna leave him. So, um... One thing I'm considering is adding a box collider based on the position of this, uh, oh, the texture maps are broken for that one stone wall connector. Weird. I don't know why I'm trying to look, <laughs> but um, there's some clipping, lots of little things. Um, I'm noticing, but um, no, yeah, uh, because during a playtest, someone like jumped over into this area, which bypasses a lot of the um, of this bottom section of the level. Um, I think like it's um, on the one hand, you know, if you have like health pickups and stuff on the way around it it kind of uh incentivizes people to to take the intended route but um i think it is it's good to look at look at the game with the the idea that um it's going to be played you know played by the lecturers on demo day um and they probably, you know, they might just think that's the way to go. And of course we want them to have like the intended experience. So I might just put a collider there. I almost feel like there should be two versions of the game, like um, one that really 
holds your hand um, and say even if you die there would just be like loads of respawn points so that the lecturers are getting the best possible experience um, and then a version that's more designed for an unli you know like an unlimited amount of play but I don't know maybe we should just stay true to a singular intended experience and just kind of rely on that to be enough for for the lecturers yeah, I, fi I find um, a lot of the time I, I use the beans twice they use two farts um, which always results in the, the voice lines overlapping I guess we could either make it so one bean can consumption is like enough to 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 satiate them um, but equally I, I think fixing the audio overlapping would be be a good way to do it especially like because the the placement of the beans have, have, has been kind of um, designed around the amount of health you receive from them so actually yeah I think the latter option is a lot better Can't be fucked with these worm boys right now. We great to have a spin attack, but then in yet. So I put a few more. Um, oh. Beans just hidden in the graveyard. You reckon your putrid bowels, Golly? That was definitely you. I feel like this is where the screen went black before, so... Into a thousand cesspits, putrid barrels. I saw you talking to the beans earlier. I think as well just the volume of the voice, the voice lines are a bit... a bit loud right now. I have to find myself pausing whilst that's happening. I'm a bit rusty on my my own uh, platforming puzzles, but is this the one? <laughs> Nearly there. Oh, there we go. Oh, it did it for a second, but then it stopped. That's because I was definitely moving around after the screen went black before. So maybe that that glitch has something to do with the assets, because as far as I, I mean, it's happened other places in the past, but maybe the places in the past contain the same asset, which is causing this issue. I have no idea what kind of aspect of an asset would cause this problem, though. It's quite a shame, um, so I, I've completely finished all the uh, texture maps for the Hattertron. Um, ended up being 37 separate objects that all had individual texture maps. Um, and that was my fault, um, because what I did was I had the block out for the Hattertron. And um, I just proceeded to, I didn't really optimize. So the way it was rigged with the, with the block out, say for example, like the arm is made up of like some spheres and, and some um, cylinders and, and stuff like that. And 
say like a, a sphere and a cylinder were both parented to the same um, joint. So there's no there's no really like good reason why they would be separate objects. Um, so that was definitely my fault. Um, I'd never done like a like a robot before. Um, I think now optimizing the the pieces would would definitely be one of the first things I really think about. Um, but yeah, so that's all done. Uh, it's just to be to be changed. Um, it's a bit tricky uh, because usually um, you would just apply the texture maps to it. Uh, but because the original Hattertron was was implemented without any uh, UVs and and I had to redo some of the geometry because of the way I sculpted some of the pieces had to be uh, retopologized. Um, it's just not as simple as applying the texture maps. So that's kind of why I guess it's um, not in. But I'm pretty excited to to see the Hattertron with the with the textures with the new version because um yeah it it, it looks uh, i was kind of scared that the oh god the the texture maps would be inconsistent because it has so many pieces you you wouldn't be able to like import all 37 of them into a uh, substance painter once into a thousand cesspits because it would literally I just saw you tucking into beans earlier. break the program. Um, but fortunately, to aid this fear, this issue, the potential issue of inconsistent texture maps, um, I learned how to create my own uh, smart textures, which means you 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 kind of build up the layers of of textures on on the on the object within Substance Painter and you can you can then export that those layers and kind of compress it into a, a single thing called a smart texture that then when you import the other pieces of the same oh, the same character you can apply it and kind of work from there so that was a massive benefit um, additionally the Hattertron was the first character I tried using emissive textures on I used it for the eyes and that came out really well I think especially in this darker scene um, it's gonna look really good because it's a little head within within its kind of big big exo not exoskeleton like a uh, it was like the armor and stuff like uh, I think it's gonna look quite good it's little beady glowing eyes so I'm quite excited to see that here's another oh what is that? Oh, that was my fault. Yeah, there's a piece of fence inside this church. Again, yeah, this is one of the last things. Um, it shouldn't take too long now because I'll probably. I don't think I'm. Th if I if I approach the church with um with modularity in mind, it would probably take quite a while. But I think I'm just gonna expedite the process by. Creating a single, probably what I'll do is I'll I'll get this block out that I made, and I might tweak it a little bit to add a, a few more details in Maya, and then import that into uh, ZBrush and uh, sculpt it and use a lot of alpha alpha maps uh, like images and stuff to to get wood. Would it be stone or wood? Maybe a mixture of both. Um, yeah, just do it all as one thing. Because I think creating a bunch of modular assets at this point, I, I think pretty happy with kind of the buildings and stuff. And I think our other um, uh, 3D artist is, has created some modular building assets as well, so it doesn't really seem too necessary for me to do. Collected quite a few um, beans, which is good. 
feel ready to take on these harder areas and even maybe even kill the Hattertron boss which I feel like might be impossible with the uh, without a dash but we'll see it's like the last thing anyway it's kind of like a trick thing it's like oh you can get these but then surprises you because nothing should be that easy the, the kind of the idea when you come up here is you look around this feels like the natural direction to take then again you get surprised oh that's weird I specifically did this in a way where the the nav mesh would allow for them to come through but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore I feel like this might be due to the fact that in uh, because people wanted to optimize the um, the collision boxes and everything of, of the geometry they went and into the prefabs and and kind of changed it up simplifying it making it more optimized but um, it's just a and that's scream of black again great two kind of yeah twice in a row almost twice in one playthrough maybe if I close it and press continue I although wait I didn't get to the next um, campfire did I no so yeah the black screen is an issue Um, what are they saying? Oh yeah, so, uh, because people were trying to optimize the, um, the mesh colliders and box colliders and, and stuff for the, for the different assets, um, it's meant that some of the more intentionally, uh, yeah, in intentionally placed geometry, as in, <laughs> The, um, now, this is frustrating. Um, so, like, some of the more peripheral, like, um, geometry, like, it, you know, you don't, it doesn't really matter too much what the, the colliders are like, because you're not necessarily interacting with them or the, um, the enemy the enemies aren't interacting with them either but there's some specific instances like the platforming puzzles as well where um, you know they've been play tested and a lot and, and, and designed to have really specific collision um, so yeah I just had to go through and, and change some of that stuff back and it looks like that that little spot where the the worm boys are meant to come through I missed on redoing them. But fortunately, um, it's not too hard to change back. So, and and generally, what generally like it's probably the easier way around because like it means that I can specifically change that one assets. Uh, collision back to how it was intended but then all of the other versions of that in, in it, like in that case for example it was the fences there's so many fences obviously it's better to do it that way around than to um, go and optimize every individual fence that isn't designed to have uh, the worms go through it because because what what that did by, by optimizing it simplifying it, it it enlarged the collision and meant that the nav mesh um, the pathing of the uh, the enemy was distorted to a degree where they weren't able to go through that that space
the way I see it, it's just um, it's just growing pain. Oh, you see that? It went the screen went black again for a second. Um, yeah, it's just kind of growing pains where where people, you know, when, when more people start working on the level. Um, <laughs> when more people start, well, that's a spawn system in there though. You see that? Usually you spawn right at the back there, so you can see all of the um, all of the gravestones with the tutorial text on there. So that's that's awesome. And yeah, so it's like it's just a sacrifice, really. Like, because ultimately, more people working on it is a good thing, because you get things like spawns and all this great sound design and the sam stamina and and all of this new shit. But it comes with the, you know, the caveat of certain stuff which was designed, um, just having to be redone, sometimes. I feel a bit scared to go down, it's like jaws or something if I jump down. I always regret trying to run past everything because they always die, but we're getting a little bit frustrated. I think this, over the bridge around here, um, gonna add another bonfire. And yeah, just probably aim to have twice the amount of respawn points that there exist now. And yeah, I made the probably mentioned this before. I'm just trying to... Let me get... Okay. Cool. I'm safe. Oh, got past all of those. I'm going to try to get to the... Although the main reason why I haven't been able to progress through the entire level is because of the black screen. Um... Damn, man! <laughs> if I walk around a bit. Or maybe if, if I die. It will spawn me back. Instead of having to close out the game. Okay, so we know, okay, right, so this playthrough has become a little bit more like me versus the black screen, but now that we know that if you die, you respawn back to a bonfire and the black screen goes away, if I get to the next bonfire. Okay, yes, yes, yes. This is the plan. We speed run the fuck out of this bit. Because honestly, I've said everything I need to say about this first area. I've, I've had my fill, I've had my fun. They've been great. They've been a hoot and a holler and a gaff and a, and a meme, especially that guy. Shout out to him. But, um, yeah. A bit a bit fatigued and it if it was my own fault my uh for diet like if it was my bad playmanship you could say my my gaming skills then uh i would suck it up and 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 probably try and play the game properly but yeah it's a glitch which is never fun Wow, didn't even trigger the... Okay, maybe I did. Thought I didn't trigger this one, boys. Yeah, as long as... As long as I don't get a black screen before... I get to the next, uh... Bonfire, shit should be alright.
I like the wind sound. That's all. <laughs> This bit is a not good idea to speed run at all. Once you get into this bit, there's a bunch of boys of the worm variety which will slap you. And um, I'm actually terrified of doing that uh, platforming puzzle now. Because twice it has caused the black screen. I'm even considering... Yeah, I think... Okay, so what... What I'm going to do is go up to the next campfire. I want to call them campfires because it makes it sound like slightly less of a, whoa, a rip off of Dark Souls, but really uh, semantics does not change the fact that it is a bit of a rip off. <laughs> We're almost there. Just a little longer. Hopefully. I'm even scared to mention the black screen because, uh, you know how that goes. So I'm just gonna try and run past <coughs> these ones. Just, hey, Gunny, what's that up? Was Wait, that you. worm boy is still bigger? I don't actually know he's not as big. Okay, so I think now we've collided with the invisible uh, collider. All colliders are invisible. What the fuck am I saying? Um, the Yeet Boy's being chill. We like that. Should make a variant called a chill boy. That'd be sick. They don't do nothing. They just chill. And they fucking... That's it. They just sleep or something. But yeah. Oh... Uh, this is obviously not something that's going to be in the game, but it would be it would be quite cute to have like a a um a sit mechanic. Um, yeah, you could just sit on the log and just think think about how much you hate black black screens. But let's proceed. I'm happy. I've got past that shit so I can show you this stuff. Um, this is one of the most difficult you're platforming right puzzles. Your putrid barrels. I saw you ducking into beans earlier. But it's it's more of a it's a knack it's a knack based thing rather than a skill based thing. Oh got got to Regain the stamina. But, um, yeah, it's just you have to um, jump onto that branch and then without hesitation jump onto the next because you can't actually really like stand on it. But I can't even get up that bit apparently. Now I. Th oh. Okay. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I think that was just the train. You're right, mate! A bit on your own now. I feel kind of mean. All of his, all of his mates are dead. This another crack. Bench of a thousand cesspits. Connie, that was definitely you. Your rectum, your putrid bowels. I saw you ducking into beans earlier. Hey, okay. Back up here. Yeah, the trick is you jumped straight. Oh. 
<sighs> End of a thousand cesspits. Connie, that was definitely you. Oh, keep forgetting the stamina. Because, yeah, a lot of the um, puzzles required a run up before, which you can't do if you don't have stamina. Okay. Pop it down. Gonna try and get. Why am I so much worse at these now? I have, I'm the one that fucking made them, jeez. Honestly, I could do them like every single time before. I must just be rusty in this. So then maybe, nah, I don't think, because I went through and changed everything back, so. I think I'm just rusty. But I'm getting more of a taste of what it's like for somebody who didn't make them to experience it. <laughs> there you go. Wait. We respawn. Please. Yes! Okay. They're not okay, now we know. But so do all these guys respawn as well. I feel like they've they've had their fun. I'm getting double music now. That's weird. Okay, I don't think that's intentional. <laughs> I probably should be writing these notes down. Um, these, yeah, these glitches, but I guess I'm videoing it, so it kind of works the same way. I feel, wait, I feel like maybe the geometry has changed actually because the way the way that the um, the way that you kind of collide onto yeah the way it pushes you off and, and I know for a fact that the 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 convex versions of, of the um, mesh colliders uh, between the two branches, there is collision when it's convex. So, I don't think I've lost my skill. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think that's uh, broken, actually. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll just skip it. Um, I'll go through through the rest, and and actually, uh, before I stop recording, what I'll do is I think I will um go into the project and show what the Hattertron looks like. Cause I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um. And also just get get closure on my <laughs> on my log, <laughs> just to know for sure if, if it is the uh, collider issue, which I'm like ninety I'm ninety percent sure is a collider issue. Apparently, uh, yeah, some feedback that we received on, on this guy's placement was that it's frustrating. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Nope. It seems like the, uh, the beans don't respawn. So the enemies respawn, but the beans don't. That's an interesting choice. Whoever 
made that decision. Um, it's it's brutal. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Oh, these ones are up for grabs though. Um, wait, maybe they went. Nah, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. That was um. No, because I moved the beans. The beans were initially around the campfire, but because now they exist up there, even though you can't attain them right now because of the mesh change. Um, yeah, no. I'm a confused person right now. I was five seconds ago. But I think I will probably put some beans around the campfire as well as fixing the collider issue because yeah it's one that to be more health in the game I really like the way the the kind of hype fog has this kind of layer to it um, once you get to this point I think it kind of reinforces the feeling that you're ascending um, I like it. I like it a lot. What can I say? Kill this bugger. What are you even doing up here, mate? It's not fucking free solo. Get down. You're a child. This is probably my favorite vis like visual point in the game, walking across here. Because it feels precarious. You know, you got that being in a vertigo, kind of. Um, you got the the hype fog, the the it's kind of settling, like it's you know denser than the clear air, whatever the fuck. Um, and you get a good, you know, you get a good uh, shot, a good view of the of where you come, where did you come from, where did you go. So, um, Connor Joe. <laughs> Initially, there was three uh, speed boys up here, which was an absolute just gang attack, let's say. Um, yeah, it was so claustrophobic, and you weren't, it was, just had to go. These guys were, as you know, initially meant to come through there as you proceed to the barricaded gate to the urchin camp. You're correct, you're a thousand best I saw you talking in beans earlier. Definitely you. These urchins are actually like very unfinished. Um, they're just like auto, auto everything really. After it's like an unfinished sculpt, and then the 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 retopology is just the uh, Z remesher instead of actually hand doing it. Um, uh, yeah, they were just quickly done as a placeholder for for one of the. Uh, presentations but I've kind of made a decision that I'm not gonna work on them unless every other kind of like uh, uh, environment element is done and realistically because there's only a week left I mean like because they don't look like massively unfinished it would be only if you like look really close and Especially if I look really close, right? Like, because I probably recognize it there. Not unfinished more than anyone else. But, um, they don't look so bad that it would be worth, like, spending, like, two days trying to. Because, like, retopology is a bitch, right? And, and because they would have to be retopologized, it would mean that they would need new weight painting, which is a uh, faff. 
Um, and like mechanically, you know, content wise and everything like that, they serve the purpose that they would either way. So like stuff like this final area deserves more time, I think. Then, so yeah, because there's a, oh, I shouldn't have approached him without any stamina. Um, but yeah, because, uh, he's a big boy. His, uh, hit bo his, uh, collision box for his attack is quite big and we don't have a dash or, so, so, I've never actually killed this guy before. And I'm bleeding. Oh, hey, there we go. So yeah, um, essentially you would have got the key. Uh, that's not good. Oh, it's the bloody other glitch. <laughs> this one's just funny to me now because they walk like they're trying to hold in a shit and it's quite easy to fix because you just plop down here and they're back to it. I think it's a weird thing where the they think they're in a perpetual state of falling. Um, yeah, the main issue I see is that the the people playing it with fresh eyeballs they um they wouldn't they wouldn't know that you can just you know jump off something and, and fix it. So, I mean, ideally it would be fixed, but the way I see it, before Electra play test the game on demo day, we just preface it by saying. Oh yeah, if, you know, if you, if you got an infinitely crouching conjoined twin character then just take a light hop off of uh, your nearest platform and you're good to go. And that's that. Come over here. Oh yeah, now I got all the geometry for the Hattatron. Put, putting that in should be really easy to do. Um. So yeah, uh, the the thing I'm most looking forward to probably right now is uh, starting to hear those speakers playing all of the weird Odus Keith monologues and having Jimmy Mort Frere, which is Odious Keith Mortfrayer's brother, who is dead, in it, talking from the ethereal realm to the twins, saying like, "Don't, don't listen to him. He's lost his mind and whatnot." And yeah, because um, it's not me who's doing the voice acting. Uh, I'm more excited because, it, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out because I've already heard all the stuff that I've done. It will still be satisfying to hear in the game. That's not right. It's uh, floating. That's not how physics works. Um, yeah, it's just like, and to have that back and forth. Uh, same with the, the twins and Jimmy Mortfrey. Because like, yeah, and 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 I think yeah, soon we're gonna have a uh, a little meeting with some of the people that are involved with the the voice acting and and stuff. And um, I think it's important to to. To, to have that direct communication because uh, I think that's where the best dialogue back and forth will happen is is if we kind of improvise not in person but o over discord communicating live but yeah so that was a play test of the game and as promised <laughs> um, if I open up unity hopefully it doesn't take too long Uh, what did I say? Yeah, uh, show the Hattatron. Um, and yeah, just test that. Could even just, yeah, just, just, uh, keep on recording once I fix these two things to get a little taste of how that goes. Um, yeah, fortunately...
if if an element is deleted within a prefab, sometimes there's a little thing which says revert. So that's been very useful to have. Um, wait, yeah. So I'll show the the Hattertron first. Yeah. So fucking. That disappears. Uh, I'm looking for scenes. Because I was, I was uh, just testing out everything in a separate thing. And they had to Tron took like 20 iterations because there was a lot of glitches with the geometry. Here he is. Look at him. Look at his beady little eyes. So yeah, actually, yeah, so, and then if I just hide this for a sec. Nope, wrong thing. You can see his little inner, inner bit. I think I got a little bit more creative as I went along because I started just with, like, the the hat and the, the outer body um, and finished with this. And, like, the... That's probably a better way to do this. But there we go. Um, like this outer bit is kind of inspired by like a mixture of straight jackets and those torture contraptions, which kind of look like coffins that close in on people, but there's like spikes on the inside. And then yeah, the head. I just had a lot of fun, kind of trying to add a bit more detail to it. Um, and yeah, the the eyes themselves. Uh, if you look closely there's like a crack in it and and they glow and all that fun stuff i might actually put the prefab in into this level just to see how the the emissive texture on the eyes looks because that could be pretty cool uh find him See how sparkly his eyes are. Whoa! That's not right. <laughs> what the hell? I'm glad I tested this. That's interesting. Okay. So they're not as glowy. Oh, shit. So when you're really close, they glow like a mother. Flicker. Wow. That's weird. Let's see. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So yeah, the emissive intensity intensity is on 2,000 nits right now. I don't like the sound of 2,000 nits. I um, guess let's put it on 50 and see how that looks in, in the game. Um, Twenty nits I can deal with. No, what are you? 50, 20, 50. From here, it looks awesome. That's still pretty cool. I didn't realize it would have such an, like an emissive effect. I don't know why. <laughs> what am I doing? Let me see your eyes. So hard to actually click on the eyes when you can't see them. Oh, 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 no, no, yes. Let's try 20. 20 nits. Still pretty. Because you just can't see his face whatsoever. Five? One? Two? I don't mind two.
Dude's kind of chilling. Let's see. I'm pretty happy with that because you, you can still kind of make out the the um the head itself, but it's still quite bright. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's the Hatron. Hatter Tron. Moment of truth. Am I just shit at my own platforming puzzles? Oh. See, that's why I couldn't fucking jump on it. <laughs> Alright, let's change this back. Literally that quick to do. Um, that's it. So, yeah. And let's again with this. So these are the culprits. <laughs> um, so they now have box colliders. Just remove these. And it's basically, I think it's pretty essential that, uh, Whoops. Um, it's pretty essential that they have non con non convex mesh colliders. Uh, revert. So even then, if we kept it as as convex, it would not work. But in this kind of space, you can edit them, and they don't affect the other. Um. Fence prefabs. So all the other ones will be optimized. It's just these these guys. And to test these things, we rebake the nav mesh. And twiddle our thumbs for a second. And it's... How did I do this before? <laughs> I think I know. Remove the mesh. Because the real thing is you don't want the player to go through, but you want the worm boys to go through um so any so it's, it's irrelevant really like the individual colliders as long as so that, okay i feel like that i think i probably put a box collider that was just above here that was invisible so that the player could couldn't walk through but the the one boys could slither through um so and assuming that the the invisible box collider is still there um if i just bake this again I think if there's anything else that needed changing whilst I'm here. It's not just boring shit, I think just Yeah. So that's baked, but still the path is fucked. So assuming that I put a box collider there.
Bake again. Because these colliders haven't been changed, they were always post colliders. These haven't been moved physically. I just move this. Add the non convex mesh colliders. Take a look at the navigation, bake it, and then take a look at the navigation. Take a look at the navigation. Hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna. Well, actually, no. I've already started. I was gonna say I'll, I'll just stop recording, but at this point, I feel like might as well finish it first. Uh, just move this one. Bake. This is kind of like an insight into. <laughs> okay right so that's good that's step number one uh oh we go to this object Do you have it? It'd be worth checking if this one has. Okay. Does that just relinquish its its effect on the nav mesh? Because if if that is the case, I've just been barking up the wrong tree this whole time. Something like that. Nah. I'm just messing up the design of it, even. Um, looks a bit scuffed, but so we remove that. That one doesn't matter. Um, that one, that one. Navigation off. I think that means. Um, I guess we put the, assuming that, assuming that, uh, untaking navigation static affects the path thing. Um, we can put on that. <sighs> Bake and hope. But that's it. And then play test it. And play test the platform. Hey, look at that. Okay, so that's fixed. That's good. And just do a little play this split blah, 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 blah. Let's 
yeah, just a quick test of these fixes and I'll be it. Everything will be grand. Wait, what? No. What? That doesn't make any... What the hell? Please don't tell me I have to walk through the whole level to test this. See, I don't know what's happening here. Before, um, I could just place the players wherever just to quickly play test the different um, things, changes. Uh, I think because the spawn system has been updated, it's affected the ability to so easily, to my knowledge, place the players, the... the the twins, um, which is a bit awkward. Uh, is there some kind of thing? Is there an initial spawn thing? What am I missing? Because obviously, right at the start of uh, okay, now they spawn there. Okay, Okay, what we're going to do is save this. Actually, I'm going to save it without fog. Because other people can't work on it without me removing this. So, bye bye, fog. Hello, ugly as fuck, really dark map. Um, and then, get this thing. Hope that this will enable me to spawn here to test the changes without having to actually play the game. Which I can't be bothered to do right now. I shouldn't have to. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, okay. That didn't work. Wait, I didn't even push it. Move the... F okay, I'm going to move the fire back. Save. Just in case I mess up the spawns. Okay. Um. Ooh. What's that little pup? What's that little guy? It disappears when I click it. What is that? Respawn. Spawn. I think that's what we want. You little bugger. Interesting. It's attached to the text. No idea why. <laughs> the thing is, like, for all um, intent, intent, intentions and purposes, is this will do the job. <laughs> it just 
it was just a bit jarring for a second not being able to use the the actual twins placement to respawn because if this doesn't work I'll be so confused. I'm really confused now. <laughs> oh, wait. It will be respawn. Of course it would be respawn. I'm stupid. Unless, wait, that's also in the same place. So if respawn and spawn are there. If respawn and spawn are there and I die. Can I play test my fixes? We will see. Nope. I think um, it's just something I'm going to have to ask my team about. It would be nice to have figured it out in this video. Um, and just to play test and make sure that the fixes fix the issues. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I'm going to stop filming and message them and see It's yeah, I mean, it's probably just a simple thing I'm just missing, but I tried, I tried to make it so I could go there, but yeah, it's just something that I haven't been able to figure out myself which is fine like yeah um just gonna ask them and and because yeah it's very important to be able to quickly test specific parts of the map without having to replay through to that point because yeah it's just yeah uh shouldn't be a thing but thanks for watching <laughs> i don't know um yeah this that's that's my play test. Um, could even do a little. What is it? If I go on OBS. Look at that. Um, last week. It's uh. It's going to be interesting to see where we are in a week from now with everyone working their hardest. Because, um, yeah, we don't have any other modules. Um, everyone seems to be on board of, uh, you know, just kind of crunch, I guess. Um, forget spin attack, key mechanic, dash, all of the environment assets in all of the glitches fixed that'd be awesome i think um yeah especially with the setbacks we've had and stuff um it's like a first game even though it's more like a first level it'd be cool to have that Cause like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, I speak to some people and, and they, they say like, oh yeah, well, you know, it's the first game, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm not even, you know, not my team necessarily, like just, just, pe just people I know kind of thing. It's like, oh yeah, um, it's okay to have 
shit, it's broken and I'm finished because it's the first game you've made and stuff like that. But I'm a, I'm kind of of the opinion. It's like, well, imagine if the first game you've ever made is like kind of really, really good, really exceptional. Um, and you don't treat it like, oh, it's the first game. So it's, do you know what I mean? Like it, there's a, you only ever, <laughs> you only ever have one first game. It's like, weird comparison but like you know it's why like people give a shit about losing your virginity it's like the first time you do something is like a like a, a whatever the fuck like a touchstone or whatever i don't know like a a moment in time that you can't take back um and yeah it would just be really cool to have like a game that we're proud of, that I'm proud of, as the first, first one. It'll be cool, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Probably make another video once it's done, kind of wrapping it up. Um. Sick. Expect one more update. On the twelfth.